Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. I just want to say thanks to everyone who subscribed. I initially planned to say a big thank you for hitting 5,000 subscribers, but we're over 6,500 now. I appreciate every one of you. It's pretty amazing. It's hard to believe. Just thank you so much. But anyways, in this video, we are refinishing these two nightstands. I found the full set on the Facebook Marketplace. I got them for $220 for two nightstands and two large dressers. I am super excited to get started on these nightstands and get the other ones going as well. Anyways, the plan is to stain the top and the drawers, paint the body dark gray, then glaze the piece with some stain, and rearrange the hardware. So, let's get started. The first thing we're going to do is clean this piece up a little bit, just with a damp rag, and fix any issues we have with the drawers, which this slider here was actually, the screw was just missing, so let's just attach a new one. And after that, I just tightened up all the remaining screws on the sliders just to make sure everything was in working order. Next, let's remove the hardware and then we can get started on removing the old finish. I'm using Clean Strip Premium Stripper. It's the first time I'm using this product. Just pop off the top. And then layer a nice bit of this stuff on here. Don't be shy. I'm using a cheap synthetic brush to spread the stripper across the top here. You want to make sure that you get it all over the top surface just so you know that you're not missing anywhere when you're peeling it off later. Just to show you how this works, this is a 15 minute time lapse of it uh, in action. You can kind of see where the surface is bubbling up. And you can also see where it doesn't bubble up best, but here is my first go at it. Sometimes this takes uh, a couple a couple layers of stripper to remove the surface, which I do another coat here now in a minute, but this is the first peel off. You can see the white color here on the edges. That's because it wasn't veneer under there. It was MDF. All I did here was uh, I still scraped it and then I put a bit more pressure with the fine grit steel wool. But it didn't come off very well the first time around so I'm going to layer it up pretty good on those edges on round two. So finally after applying another thick second coat we take out the scraper again and start removing the top surface and we finally got everything off the top. And now let's get onto the edges here. Clearly the edges were a little bit harder than the top and a little bit messier, but with some patience, I finally scraped everything off. After round two, this is what I was left with. So I decided to throw some more stripper on the edges here. And then I just grabbed some steel wool after 15 minutes and this stuff came off perfectly. For some cleanup, I'm using some mineral spirits just to pour a nice little bit on the top here. And of course, I poured way too much. But no worries, I'll just grab my steel wool now and rub off the top. After I finish the nightstand tops, I am doing the exact same process to the drawers. We're going to remove this finish. And as you can see, it did take a couple coats of stripper just because it was coming off perfectly on the first try. After round two on the drawers, I just used some mineral spirits and steel wool and we cleaned these guys up ready for some stain. Before it's fully ready for the stain, we're gonna use some 180 grit sandpaper and sand the surface clean. Since the veneer is super thin here, we need to be really, really careful that we don't go through it when sanding. Now I'm using 220 grit with my detailed mouse sander on the drawers. I also wasn't too sure about sanding the edges here, but I did use the 220 grit and I lightly went over them. 
I also sanded down the entire project with 220 just to give it a better surface so the paint will adhere a lot better. So I'm using Minwax Wood Finish Penetrating Stain in Ebony, so let's get started. I am applying this with a clean lint-free rag. Just simply dip it in the stain and rub it all over the surface. It's that simple. And let's not forget to do the drawers. After letting the stain sit for about 10 minutes, I came back with a clean rag and just wipe it up. I'm impressed with the way the stain penetrated into the MDF part and the way I sanded it, it gave it a pretty cool look. It matches up with the top perfectly. After leaving the stain to dry for a while, I came back and used some lacquer. I applied two light coats, but this is just so I can get the tape to stick on top while we do some painting. Before we get started painting, we need to lift the nightstands up a little bit, so I'm using these small painter's pyramids. And we are going to tape the entire top surface so no paint gets on them. Here is the primer I'm using that I apparently don't know how to hold, but it is Rust-Oleum's white primer. And it sprays on and we're gonna do a quick coat. After letting the primer dry, I just do some light sanding with a 220 grit sanding sponge. I like to get started painting in a clean area, so I'm throwing up a white drop cloth here that I got at the dollar store. And I'm just taping it on and throwing the nightstands back in place. Here's the paint I'm using. It's Bear Ultra Scuff Defense in Cracked Pepper. So this is like a super dark gray I was talking about earlier. Let's get started on our first coat. I'm using a high quality synthetic paintbrush and let's just apply multiple thin coats here. Here's what it looks like after the first coat on both of them. Since we do have this double sized drawer, there is a line in the middle here that we're gonna have to match up with the nightstand. So we're gonna paint this line gray as well. Before starting our second coat, I like to take my 220 grit sanding sponge and just give it a nice little scuff so it makes everything smooth and the paint adheres better. Now here we are on our second coat. At this time I realized I should probably spray the detailed legs and around some of the edges. So my third and final coat, I decided to take out my Wagner Flexio 590 spray gun. But before that, make sure to do a quick scuff with your 220 grit sanding sponge. When I'm using my Wagner Flexio 590, I like to add about 10% water to my paint just so the gun can spray it a lot smoother. And just add all your attachments, get everything set up, and then we'll get started on our test sprays. 
to avoid mistakes with the spray gun, it's always best to spray until you find the pattern you're looking for, or you could make a pretty big mistake that'll have you sanding everything down. When painting smaller pieces, I don't mind using a brush, but when it comes to these detailed edges, I feel that using the paint sprayer is just going to give me a much cleaner look than trying to mess around with it with a brush. Also, I don't mind using a brush sometimes just because it's I find it relaxing and the paint sprayer is a mess when you use it. It's a lot of cleanup, a lot more work. Definitely paints faster than a brush though. I'll give you that. After it dries, I begin peeling the tape off, but this is where everything starts to go downhill. So where you see the arrow pointing, there's some white residue. I thought it was from the tape, but I believe it's some reaction with the lacquer and humidity and temperatures in the garage. So because I'm up here in the Canadian winters, it's cold, a bit damp, and the moisture trapped in with the lacquer must have turned white. So I decided to remove sand and try to restart just to see if I can fix it with the heater going. But after doing everything again, trying to fix this issue, I come back to the lacquer looking like this, it's white looking surface. So instead of redoing it again, I just grab some steel wool and I rub the white areas and it kind of blends in and with a bit of time and patience, I do my best to remove it. But sometimes that's all you can do and just gotta make it work. As this is going on, I did the exact same process to the drawers again but same issue with them there's a bit of white but final decision just going to make it work anyway moving past that we're using some ebony wood stain by binwax and we're just applying this over the paint to do some glazing this is going to kind of antique the piece up and give it some character simply just apply it on your paint in sections and then wipe it off with a clean lint free rag the reason you want to do this in sections is just so the stain doesn't really get sticky on you and even if you do mess up, you can just apply it more stain and wipe it off with a clean rag. It's not super easy to see on camera, but here's one glazed and one not glazed. It really gave it some character. So I ended up finishing the second dresser antique glazing. Just apply that and wipe it off. And I actually sprayed on two coats of lacquer, but I didn't get that on camera. After that, we take out the Varathane paste finishing wax. We are gonna layer this on the drawers, the top, and I'm also putting this over the painted surfaces and glazed areas as well. I'm applying this with a clean lint-free rag. Just rub it on the rag and rub it on the surface. Pretty simple. After waiting 15 minutes, I come back with a clean lint-free rag and just polish up the surface. Finally, it's time to throw on the hardware and let's get this project finished up. However, on this double-sized drawer, I didn't get to paint it gray because of all the issues, so I just added some dark wax to make it fit in. Alright, let's take a look at these nightstands one more time before we started. And here's what they look like all finished up. As you can see, we still have a bit of white residue on the outside, but you know what? It kind of fits in with the project, so I'll take it. The white residue definitely slowed me down on this one, but you know what? We finished up, and I think it turned out pretty good. If you guys think so too, let me know in the comments below, and if you want to check out the photos I'm going to take for these guys, I'm going to throw these on Instagram as soon as possible. So thanks for watching everybody and don't forget to hit that subscribe button because there's lots of furniture flips coming your way.